alone in the lamp house for 72 hours. In part two, it gets so intense that I have to end up leaving the house. There is no way I could have stayed in this house. I rest my case. I'm going to ask about Abby's head. I didn't think at this point in time it hurt to ask to see whether these spirits are going to claim that Abby's head is in this house or what the situation is on this. When I ask this question, something really strange takes place that I will talk about at the end of this video. Is Abby's head down there? Is Abby's head even in this house? Now, when these spirits call you out by name, especially in the form of an EVP, you know something's up. You know something's not right. And I've also noticed that in that 72-hour period, once again, I was capturing a lot of help me's. Usually when you capture that many help me's, there's definitely something going on. like my face turned away from this dark basement. Alright, I would have swore I just felt something tug on my shorts. What happened to the children? You guys bring up the children a lot. What's going on with the children? Can you talk to me about this, please?
You guys bring up the children all the time in this bedroom here, in this room. Did this bedroom have something to do with the children or a child? Disembodied voice. Disembodied voice. What happened to the child? What happened to the child? And why can't I ever breathe up in this room? can't stay up in this room very long at all. Did you die in this room? Stairs are too narrow. Ouch. <clears throat> I'll pick it up later. Wait a minute. You didn't trip me, did you? Well, I don't think you did, but. At one time, you said trip me when I was going down the steps. Hello? Are you here?
All right, I'm going to turn the ghost box on, okay? You guys here tonight? Edward? You know, it's really weird. Usually this thing goes off in the house. But for some reason tonight it's not going off. Hello? Yep, it's not going off tonight. This is unusual. So who's all in here with me tonight? What's your na what's your name, please? Why are you here? So I have found the activity here in this house is much stronger before 10 p.m. After 10 p.m., the activity is not near as strong. You guys here tonight? <coughs> yeah? Absolutely quiet in here tonight. Hello?
there's some activity going on, but man, that EMF meter is not even going off at all. All right, it's midnight, I'm shutting it down. Mr. Kent needs to go to bed. I heard that. Of course, this kind of concerns me when it gets this quiet. Makes you wonder if something's up. Is there something I need to be concerned about? What? Who's Molly? Is Molly a kitty?
the child that's looking for Molly. What's your name? you find Molly? It's noisy out tonight. Is Molly your cat? Are you looking for Molly? As usual, I kept hearing strange sounds that didn't sound like the TV, and also kept seeing large mist moving. I'm going to turn the video play off. Suddenly, there's a large mist that moves right over me. I'm still hearing strange sounds. I get up and shut the AC off. Once again a large mist moves right in front of the camera. 
Is this paranormal related or is this just a quick temperature change from the AC running and the night vision camera was able to capture it? If that's the case, I don't think I'd be able to see these mists move in the room in real time. At this moment, the TV is quiet, the AC and fan are shut off, the cats stay on the front porch at night in the summer. It's so quiet in this house you could hear a pin drop. What happens next occurs many nights in this house. At this point in time, after going over the videos all day and doing investigations pretty much all night, I wasn't about to get out of bed and go check on what that noise was. Instead, I got up and I turned the AC on full blast, I turned the TV up loud, and I went to sleep. There's got to be a reason why you guys are bringing it up. They took Abby's head. What did you mean about the table when I asked about Abby's head? When I was going over the recordings and heard this female EVP that said they took my skimples, to be quite honest with you, I had no idea what skimples were. So I had to look it up. What are skimples? The female that said that, who are you? Doing these investigations, I do think it's really strange that most recently in the past few months, these spirits said that they took Abby's head. Well, now they're talking about um, they took her skimples. I don't know. I'm going to have to really dig in and do a deep investigation to find out exactly what they're talking about. And in all honesty, I don't even know who Abby is. I don't even have any confirmation of who she might be. More and more they're talking about Abby and they're getting deeper into things that they're saying about Abby.
did you do to Abby? First they say you took her head, and now her skimbles? What on earth is going on? Sick. Sick, sick. I heard that. What? Hello. What's going on in this house? Who's trapped? Or a female disembodied voice. I don't understand what you're saying. Female, female disembodied voice. Investigations, I do notice a lot of odors, strange odors, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But what's really strange about this, when I was down in the basement, when I was doing this investigation, I did notice a strange smell that smelled like sewage. I didn't say anything during the recording because I can't prove to viewers what I'm smelling. Obviously, you can't smell what I'm smelling. So I don't bother saying anything about it. But I thought I'd mention it this time because I find it interesting that what I smelled down there, this female spirit said exactly what it smelled like. Hello? Strange voice. Thank <laughs> you. 
Did you want to play on the swing? out here can you tell me who Molly is Who's Molly? Hello? Are you up here?
Where's Abby's head? Why do you guys keep talking about Abby's head? Anybody up here? Turn my light out. Voices, a lot of strange sounds and walking, movement sounds, touching.
During day two on this investigation, when I was at the basement door, there was an incident that occurred that I said I will mention later at the end of this video. This is what happened that night when I opened up the basement door. You guys down there? Is Abby's head down there? Is Abby's head even in this house? No, I don't like my face turned away from this dark basement. When I looked away from the basement into the kitchen, I had a deep, uneasy feeling something wasn't right. There are times when encountering these spirits for unknown reasons, you get unexplainable feelings in the moment. When this happens, it's likely a spirit said something you didn't hear in real time. Consciously, you didn't know what was said, but subconsciously, or should I say your spirit, heard and felt what was said in the moment, but you're unaware of what's going on. My instinct was, get away from the basement, close the door. I felt like something very evil was looking back at me. When I was going over the recordings, once again I got a deep uneasy feeling when I came across this part of the investigation. I enhanced and slowed the recording down. When listening closely, I could hear very faint voices. Is Abby's head down there? I do another enhancement in hopes to clarify this growl voice, and I also hope this was audio pareidolia on my part, but I don't believe this is audio pareidolia. There was a reason why I felt troubled. A few months ago, I did what I could do by rebuking the evil out of this basement, out of the house. But I know from experience, you kill flies in the house, once you open the door, more flies will come in. This is the same scenario when dealing with demonic entities. I do everything possible not to open that door. What happened to the child?
My thoughts keep going to a biblical scripture that says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I now fully understand the meaning of this. I'm feeling a lot of tension, and at this point in time, I'm feeling a lot of regret staying in the Lamb House alone this long. It won't take much to send me over the edge.
I knew if I didn't go to the car and get some sleep, I'd probably not sleep at all. And I'd already been going on maybe three or four hours sleep each night. So this is the thing. I've known the paranormal activity in this house at nighttime was there. I mean, I knew because when I'd lay in bedroom at night and watch TV and stuff, I'd always hear disembodied voices and strange sounds. But a lot of times I was just wondering if somebody in the family was making noise that that contributed to some of the stuff that was going on. But after spending three nights alone in this house, well, two and a half nights, you know, this house has a lot of activity in it at night. You realize in the reality, and I can't talk right because I'm really sleepy, but the reality settles in of just how powerful this paranormal activity is. You know, it's just mind-boggling. You know, and I'm just, I look at the house from where I'm sitting, I can see it out the car window here, and I'm just like, I have to question, why in the hell are we living in this house? You know, I mean, this activity is interesting, but I don't know. After these three nights, this activity was a lot more powerful than what I thought. And there's a lot more spirits in this house than what I thought. Yeah, I'm going to try to get some sleep. It's going to be light soon and the traffic's going to pick up, so I'm probably not going to sleep much. But now, if anybody doubts paranormal activity is real if anybody has any questions they need to spend three nights in a house like this alone and experience how real this activity is i mean not just in this house any house any house that's known to be haunted spend three nights in there alone by yourself All right.